Welcome back. So, I think today I want to talk about how uh, nothing's perfect and nothing is ideal and everything is different for uh, pretty much everybody right now. And um, I'm in a repurposed space right now. Um, and because uh, I don't have a perfect spot to make videos that um, I don't have other noises. And even in this video, you will hear a groaning noise <laughs> that is coming from a piece of equipment in this room. So there you go, right? Um, you know what? We, we don't have control of um, hardly anything. It's like raising kids. We have varying degrees of cooperation. So we'll see how far I get. Um, I have, was out this morning just in the car. I'm blessed to live in an area that we can get in the car and within 20 minutes we're out of we're out in the big open country and I took a lot of photographs this morning uh, the clouds were fantastic um, I've noticed the air is super clean I think it's because we're all um, tucked in and we're driving a lot less so but anyway I hope you're taking photos to I hope even if it's just out in your backyard or your front yard or your veranda, um, if you've got some flowers, take pictures of them um, or, or paint from them. Let's uh, uh, let's try to keep on our ref our own reference material using our own photographs. Um, so, and that's what I'm going to be doing is going through my photographs and my reference material. I'm going to make uh, choose what my next painting video is going to be. I thought I had it in my head <laughs> what I was going to do, but right now is a perfect time to um, do a landscape for me. Uh, skyscapes, I love. So that's what I'm going to be working towards. I wanted to talk to you a bit about like canvases um, because I know myself, I'm really short on canvases right now and I can't just get out and you know, uh, wander through an art supply store, which is like wonderful for me. Some women, it's shoes or purses or makeup. For me, it's paint <laughs> and brushes, um, the art store. But, and I can order um, online, which I do a lot. There's several, uh, like the art supply warehouse, but I right now I'm ordering through Dick Flick. Um, they have pretty good prices um, and if you order a certain amount and shipping is free so I need to put together together an order because I'm my brushes are getting worn out and, but canvases let's talk canvases um, we have our traditional canvases which I've talked about uh, like with um, Cowboy Remedy he was on a gallery view uh, gallery wrapped canvas which is pretty typical right now and like I said, they come um, wider, inch and a half width, which is what really the galleries prefer. But you know what? I'm kind of in a pinch right now. Um, but I'll get back to that. I wanted to talk about um, uh, other other canvases. Um, this this little grandchild of mine is on a linen canvas, and you can tell from the back it's very gray. And you know what? Your canvases should sound like this. They shouldn't be soft and swishy, right? No, they need to sound like a nice, nice drum. My my grandson made cutie pie. Of course, he's now a teenager. <laughs> but um, uh, I do like uh, linen. And uh, it's a little coarser texture. Um, another, another grandbaby right here. Um, and she's on a cotton, uh, local, uh, distributor like Michael's or whatever, just a regular, but it doesn't, it's, it's pretty tight, but it's not, doesn't have that resonating drum sound. I really like a nice tight canvas. You can tighten them. Um, you'll find that there are, I don't think these have keys. This one, I think had a key to it. Do you see these? In the corner they're little sticks that come with canvases and you could shove them into the corners if uh, to tighten your canvas or to square it up and that's what those are called is 
canvas keys and they're super nice and you can really hear the tautness of that canvas. Um, the other thing, which is what I'm having to do, is um, I am using what's called a canvas pad. And there's a cloud going on that one. But it's like 50 sheets of canvas, already gessoed and ready to go. Um, this is from Michaels. It's Artist Loft, which is fine. Uh, it needs to say, all these are reversed. Everything I'm doing with you is going to be reversed. But it needs to, it needs to be 100%, um, it needs to be a cotton uh, cloth. Um, how do they say it? Here's another one. Uh, it's a gin, uh, which this, this brand is my favorite. I love Fredericks, right? And it's reversed. But it, it needs to be, um, um, what does it say? I'm sorry. It needs to be um, canvas, 100% canvas, not canvas paper. That's what I'm trying to spill out here. It needs to be 100% canvas and not canvas cloth. Canvas cloth does not work with oil paints, at least not in my experience. Um, so um, these come in all sizes. Uh, they come very small. And uh, this one is a 12 by 16, all right? And what I do is like, <laughs> um, this one I have, I have gridded off this sheet and um, I've painted this rose. Uh, there's like four sections on here and I might paint four different pictures. Then I um, separate them and I can mount these and frame them if I'm uh, happy enough with them. And you will recognize this one. Uh, I get the page turn. Of course I need to be dry to do that. Let's see, that's what Big Sky and Bison was painted on, okay? Because, uh, frankly, I'm out of regular stretch canvases. This is the same material that's on my stretched canvases. But uh, what's really cool about this, and then I'm going to take this, and I'm going to mount it on a panel, and um, it can be framed. And I'll show you... Um, This painting here is was done on the canvas pad, the, the you know the sheets, and um, but then what I did is I went ahead and you can see this is just not another piece of masonite. You need to have an adhesive to do it, um, but you you put it on a panel, and then this framed up beautiful so there's a lot of ways to get around not having sorry everything's falling down not having stretch canvases and I'm when I'm painting I'm a prolific painter so I have done this for many years with the canvas pad it's a canvas pad not a it's a hundred percent canvas it is not cloth um, or paper. Gosh, I'll get that straight. 100% um, canvas, um, not paper. <laughs> okay, clear as mud. So um, that's what this is. Medium texture, real artist canvas, not paper. Okay, I think I got that straight. So once you have all these, you can either store them in your pad. It's kind of like a sketch pad, but it's a painting pad. Of course, to do this with them, you have to make sure they're really dry. But over here, I have this roll of canvases. Lots and lots of rolled up canvases. Of paintings I told you I've taught myself to paint and I have used I have bundles like this I have probably four or five bundles like this and in here are many many 
many, many, many paintings that I have done. Not a lot of space here. But so these are canvases, they're paintings. And I can I could hang on to them. <laughs> sort of. Um, but I can I can store my paintings this way. Okay. Um, I like Pinot. I've uh, studied Pinot. These are studies. I would never sell these um, in here. These are uh, the ones of Pinot. And uh, let's see. You love this? You right hear it in the thick of it with me. And I don't have enough space. <laughs> like, this is J.W. Waterhouse. Okay? Um, studying his palette. It's a big canvas. Um, but that's, you know, there's no right or wrong to how you learn. And um, I just have to keep, keep, I just keep learning. And um, I keep, you know what artists do? This is like if I was playing the piano every day, if I was a pianist, and I was playing, playing the piano every day, it's like you're practicing. Um, to me, Artists are in training constantly. We're never not in training. I mean, every time we do a painting, it's unique and it's, it offers uh, new challenges. Here's, um, uh, here's Le, Le Bant by uh, Poudreau. This, this, this one got folded and so it's creased it, which is really unfortunate. But what I learned from Poudreau because the colors are different. Uh, back in the day of Bougereau, they didn't have all the colors we have, but what I discovered to make this particular palette work, um, I had to put a touch of black into every single color I mix, every single mixture, um, to get this to work. Um, so, these are my tips right now on, um, you know, how to not just have canvases everywhere, how to do studies of artists that you love and you'd like to figure out how they do it, their palettes, their, hmm, I don't know, brush strokes, everything. And I've, I've studied um, uh, John Singer Sargent. I like um, uh, Howard Turpening. I like Pino, as I said. Um, Oh, so many. Um, this one behind me, uh, which is glare on it, sorry. But it's a print of um, Maxwell Parrish. And he worked totally in glazes. And it would take him six months or nine months to complete one painting because he worked totally in glazes. And you'd have to research him. It's pretty fascinating. And it, he would have maybe a dozen paintings started. And uh, he would do his whole value study and say, blue and then when that dried he'd come over with a red glaze if he wanted violets somewhere or he'd come over with a, um, a yellow ochre glaze or a yellow over areas in a tree that he wanted greens and each glaze had to dry completely before he could move to the next one it kind of reminds me of uh, printing how they used to do it with three color separation but anyway go get your pictures taken Get your reference material, um, and I hope you're making art. I don't care if you have a brown paper bag and a number two pencil. Get busy, okay? Get busy. Do your thing. And experiment. Oh, well, this one's just going to fall over. You know what? Life is not perfect, and I don't have control of hardly anything. <laughs> so... Um, I will get back uh, with you and I'm going to go through my reference material. I'm going to, uh, next time we're going to talk about palettes and, uh, we will just continue. So carry on. Happy, happy creating. Bye. Be well.